Hi, my name is Charles, and today on my channel, I'm going to continue to show what I got during the rest of the Barnes & Noble's Criterion sale. I said it right this time. Usually, apparently, I say Barnes & Noble's, but I'm pretty sure I said Barnes & Noble the first time I said it. We'll see. We'll see. I ain't going back to see if I said it right, so if I said it correctly at the start of this video, then yay me. But if not, it's whatever. As I said in my last video, I was going to go to Portland and buy some Criterions there, so I do have video footage of me shopping in Portland for Criterions that I bought during my last haul I posted, but also for some Criterions I hadn't bought yet. So um, before I show you like everything I got, I will show you the video of me um, you know, shopping around at Barnes & Noble's in Portland, so that's going to be something, that's going to be something. It's about to be a little bit messy, but you know. It's something, and I had someone, not just someone, I had my cousin Chelsea do the recording so I could actually walk around freely and like, you know, my whole body's showing. I don't think I'm showing the best line, but you know, it's whatever. But yeah, it was fun to have someone to bounce like, you know, thoughts off of instead of like me usually just shopping by myself. I mean, recently I've been talking to people who've been shopping at the same time, so that's been fun, but yeah. Shopping in Portland was a lot of fun because, once again, I had my cousin to film and also it was just fun to talk to her while I was filming. So before we get into the whole, you know, showing what I got, I will just flash to the footage of what I was doing in Portland shopping at Barnes & Noble's there. And that's going to happen right about now. Wait, are we filming right? Yes. Okay, whatever <laughs> happens in this video, it's going to happen. I don't care right now. I was about to say, you want to go to Applebee's after? <laughs> when I can't drink, yeah. Oh my god, I keep forgetting you can't, girl. 19, man. Like, you need to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, how much is tax in Washington again? I think it's like... Oh, I don't know no more, because they keep raising it. Yeah, I thought it was only 10% tax. I think it's more than that now. It's more than 10%? It might be. I don't know. Man. That's why I'm just like... Like, buying these Criterions in um, Portland, I'm just like, girl... I know no the taxes. tax will survive to at least two of these be free. That, yeah, yeah honestly, like, I think that's how it's gonna If you do the math for it, yeah, and I'm just like, hey, that's like $40 for me. So, I mean, how could you pass that up? You just gotta be an annoying person at the register and be like, sorry, I have to return all this stuff because I bought it in Florida. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not above being that person. So, I'm just like, what else did I buy? I don't know. Like, it's hard. I should have bought a list. I should have rewatched my video. <laughs> how much did you buy last time? <laughs> I said in the last video, I was like, oh, I didn't buy that much. But now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, that was a lot. And I'm trying to buy a box set too. So uh, I'm probably screwed. This one I actually don't have a copy of yet, which is why I'm like, like I'm trying to get this. But like, I already have it on Blu-ray, but this is a 4K and you almost got to upgrade. Right. And where's the rest of these criterions? Where did I get the rest of them? Oh, it's right here. Oh, they're all right here. I'm stupid. <laughs> I legit was like, where is it? And then it's right here. Oh, I want this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have it yet. Which one is that one? It's called The Last Hurrah for Chivalry. I had it before, but then I sold it because it was in bad condition. And then now I'm like, I will rebuy it because I think I can get it here. Better now. At a better price. So, I mean, might as well. Seriously, I'm really doing this from memory, what I bought. <laughs> it's taking like a lot so far. <laughs> Yeah, Chelsea, I'm just like, they are a lot. That's why I'm just like, that's why I'm just like, like, whatchamacallit, um, like, I need to bring these back to Washington and then return the ones I bought in Washington. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, tax, baby. You said there's more. There is more. There has to be there more. There has to be more. You didn't, just, you didn't take a picture of them all before? I didn't. It's like, I just make the videos and then I go, well, I made the video, I'm forgetting. It's like, because my last video had like over a thousand. I said, yay! Oh, Did really? someone watched it? <laughs> I, I, I legit just be making videos, Chelsea. I'm just like, sure. Why just not? Gotta, might as well vlog it. I'm like, silly rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what I was thinking about when I thought about that line. Oh, was, I don't know what, what the girl's from, but she's like doing a, a very serious interview. And he's like, sometimes he calls me his silly rabbit. No, he goes, she goes, silly rabbit. And they go, he calls you his silly rabbit? No. No. <laughs> and I'm like, why don't you say that, girl? There's two of these are ones that I don't own yet. The rest of these are ones I, I do own. And once again, that's why I'm like, when I look at my collection, I'm like, mm, you kind of crazy bitch. Because <laughs> they were like, oh, what are you going to do? You have so much. And I'm like, I do have so much. What am I going to do with them? I could not tell you for the life of me. It's just a little collection. 
It is a mess. It's a little collection. Little. Little. <laughs> little in quotation marks. Oh, they have more. Because some of these come in bad condition because there's like, because there's like the bottoms or whatever are screwed up. So it's like. Like the wrapping. Yeah. The artwork sleeves get like munched up. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just like a machine belt putting it together. But it's like, I care. So I want the most perfect one. I do. Just. No creases, no I, nothing. See, this is Derek in here, which is why I kind of want to get it. Ooh, they do? Uh, yeah. Oh, I get a blizzard. Get a blizzard. Blizzards sound good, don't they? They do. I'll buy you a blizzard. Really? Yeah, I'll buy you a I haven't had a blizzard in a while. I'll buy you a blizzard. I mean, yes. I'll be, I'll be queer. Trying to get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh no, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already do know I'm missing one. Really, I'm just like, the stupidity want make kind of I mean wants to look at the video. <laughs> Wait, I know now. Okay, which one are we missing? I'm missing uh, a brighter summer day and disturb it. Have you did you did you ever watch yeah, Roman and Juliet in high school? I have, yeah. You know it's right here. They just released it in a better quality video. Ooh. And I don't know if I should buy it because I don't know if I'm a fan of it. And also that kind of gives me flashbacks to high school when they made me made us watch it. Yeah, I got forced into watching it, and then we had to do a play about it. Like, Ew, you play? yeah, that was her final. Sounds traumatic. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to wrap it up. That way we can get ourselves some ice cream. Ice cream. Well, I don't know if I want a s'mores one or if I want the, the, the one that's like. Can I get any flavor? You get any flavor you want. That's adorable. <gasps> it's like, it's on me. Girly, we did not get blizzards. I mean, the Dairy Queen closed before we could get there. So it was quite sad. And also the food court at the, um. Lloyd Center, where the Barnes & Nobles is located in Portland, is very sad. It's very sad. That whole area, it's like a mall, but I'm like, it's very, like, kind of abandony at this point, and I'm just like, girl, why is the Barnes & Nobles in this place? We need to be in the downtown area, because this area ain't it. It ain't it. It's given dead, but, you know, no blizzards. Sadly, no blizzards after the whole Criterion Hall, but, eh, it was whatever. <gasps> they have this I was just looking at that. It's a crazy movie. Make, I've heard about it. Yeah, they make the people do crazy things. Yes. And part of me is like, do I want to order a copy of it? Decisions. You might as well. People say it is scarring. People say it gives you nightmares. You know what? You know. And I'm just like, you know what? Why Maybe not? I'm fine with just reading the wiki. Like I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eventually I probably will watch it, but I'm like, I'm like, I don't know about that, honey. <laughs> I was like, is Chelsea gonna make it? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, buying it at once makes me feel like shit. Kind of. Uh, see, I was right. The amount I told you was right. Chelsea. You were oh, right. right. You That's know. Like, like, I'm crazy. But you know what? Yes, this video will continue back in Washington. So I'm just gonna show all the stuff that is new. Okay, continuing from, you know, Portland Charles to, you know, now present day Charles. I was shocked with how many Criterions I bought. I mean, once again, I had to buy all the Criterions I bought during the first haul that I posted because no tax in Portland, but I had to buy some of the ones that I wanted that I didn't get yet or were just released. So I was like, I get those too. And then on top of that, I went to, you know, the Barnes and Nobles in Washington two more times afterwards, after, you know, this whole Portland like weekend, that way I can get the other new releases I wanted. So it's been kind of a mess. It's been kind of a mess with how much I've spent during this Criterion sale. I really did not see myself spending that much during the Criterion sale, to be honest. But you know what? I haven't been buying that many movies throughout the year because, you know, they ain't releasing that many good movies on physical copies because, you know, studios suck and all that. So I'm just like, hey, all the money I would have spent usually has been poured into these Criterions now. If you haven't watched my, you know, first Criterion haul for, like, this whole sale that I posted like at the start of this month, then go watch that because I'm not gonna show you any of the movies that I rebought from that video. So if you didn't watch that video, just quickly go watch it if you want. That way you can be in the know of all those movies I got. But we're just gonna jump into the rest of the movies I got during like the Portland sale that I didn't show in the first video and also the rest of the ones I bought during the rest of the Criterion sale. So yes. I gotta finish this whole video already because I had to get myself to go watch Oppenheimer. I mean, I didn't get to see Oppenheimer opening weekend. I watched Barbie twice, though. Yay, in Dolby. But uh, it was hard to get a you know, ticket to see Oppenheimer in IMAX in like a good seat. So I was like, I guess I'll have to wait 
to watch it during the weekday. So that day is today. So I got to finish this video and then get myself to the theaters to go watch Oppenheimer in like the middle of the day, even though I don't want to. But, you know, it's whatever. I'm just going to say real quickly, if you haven't watched Barbie or if you're not planning to watch Barbie, then you should because Barbie's great. And, you know, I get that Barbie's a little messy at times, but, you know, it's a lot of fun and it's very heartfelt. It's very poignant and, you know... It deserves the success it's getting, and the people who are hating on it, I'm like, y'all, it's really showing. It's really showing the misogyny, to be honest. It's like, y'all, this movie is good, and it's like not negative at all. So it's like, if you are having very like bad, ill willed like comments toward it and feelings toward it then you gotta check yourself baby but yes watch barbie if you haven't seen barbie because barbie is great and if it does make a billion dollars that'd be amazing but you know if it doesn't it's whatever because either way it's already successful so it's like baby girl yes but yeah as i said watching oppenheimer today hopefully it's good because three hours of my life girl okay hopefully christopher nolan doesn't bore me like he did dunkirk sorry to everyone who likes dunkirk but i'm not a fan of dunkirk even though i do own dunkirk Okay, starting off with spine number 37, I have Time Bandits from Terry Gilliam. This was one of the first Criterions I bought. One of the first? Yeah, it was one of the first Criterions I ever bought when I started like collecting Criterions. But I sold it because I wasn't feeling it at the time. I mean, who knows, maybe I still won't be feeling it at the time. But when I saw this slip, this lenticular slip, ooh, wow. But... It reminded me of seeing the lenticular slip for the DVD edition of Time Manage. And the Blu-rays didn't have the slip. So when I saw this 4K had the slip, I was like, look, I gotta get it. Because, you know, they usually don't give Criterion slips. The only ones that I think had slips were this, um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which is now out of print, and Pink Flamingos. I mean, there probably is one or two others, but those are the only three that come to mind. So I was like, look, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. And, you know, maybe it looks better in 4K. Maybe my opinions about it have changed over time, but I was just like, I'm gonna get Time Bandits. So yeah, I got it. Okay, next up, I have spine number 38, and that is Seijun Suzuki's Branded to Kill. I was like, girl, can I say his name? Did I say it right? Did I say it right? Hopefully I did. But anyway, I have never seen this movie before. This is a movie that is a blind buy, and I keep telling myself, don't do blind buys, Charles, because you might not like the movies, and then what are you going to do? You're going to have to sell them for lesser than you bought them. But this just came out on 4K, and I heard it was good, and I heard it was better than Tokyo Drifter, which I have not seen either, but, you know, I watched the trailer for this, and I was like, it looks interesting enough. So I was like, I'm in, I'm in. So hopefully it's good, but if it isn't good then I'm going to have to sell it on eBay, like the way of all the other criterions that I did not want to keep anymore. So hopefully this is good. Tell me down below in the comments if you thought this movie was good, if you've seen it, because I don't know, I just don't hear people talking about this movie when it comes to the Criterion Collection, even though it's one of the like oldest Criterions in the collection. I mean, spine number 38, it's one of the original Criterions. So I'm just like, it has to be good because I honestly believe Criterions 1 through 100 they have to have some merit to them to be like the first 100. But then again, I'm pretty sure like, what's it called? Armageddon from Michael Bay is in there too. So, I mean, choices. Choices were made by the Criterion people. But hopefully the choice of adding this movie into the collection was the right one. And hopefully my choice of blind buying it is correct as well. Okay, up next is spine number 216. Why did I say it like that? 216 is what I meant to say. But it is The Rules of the Game from Jean Renoir. And this is a movie that I saw like a long time ago. I rented it from the public library near my house. So I saw it and then I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. But I'm not really feeling it, baby. But, you know, that was years ago. I think that was like four or five years ago that I saw this movie. So maybe my feelings toward it will change now that I've grown in age. That happens when you grow up. Your perspective on movies obviously changes. So hopefully my perspective of this movie has changed as well. I They announced it had a 4K and I wasn't going to buy it still. But, you know, looking at this in the store, I was just like, yes, I will get it. And... Once again, hopefully it's good because people say it's a masterpiece, one of France's best movies ever made. And it's like, okay, let's dip back into this whole class 
movie again and hopefully it is better than I remembered it to be. Okay, up next I have spy number 490 and that is Wings of Desire from Wim Wenders in 4K. I have this on a Blu-ray. It took me forever to get a good edition of this movie in on a Blu-ray because like they were all, all the artwork sleeves or lithographs, whatever you call the insert artwork of this, like they were messed up. There was dents in them and like crease lines from them being awkwardly put into these things and it took me forever to get a good copy and then what, flash forward like what? a year or two later and they put out a 4k of this I mean that's annoying and now I'm just like that's that's the thing about these 4k releases about movies I already own it's like man I just have to like wait now I guess because who knows if they're actually gonna put 4k's for all the movies out or if I should try to like get like these older blu-rays I got in better condition later on it's like I don't know I don't know but Anyway, when it comes to Wings of Desire, I've only seen this once. I liked it, but I don't remember to what degree I liked it. I mean, I really like Peter Falk in this as an angel, so I should rewatch this soon. That way, not only can I experience it in 4K, but also re experience it just like the rules of the game and time bandits. Be like, do I like this more or do I like it the same or do I like it less than when I watched it the first time around? Okay, up next, I have spine number 1157, and that is. Daisies. Sorry to the director, but I cannot pronounce your name and I couldn't find a video of anyone pronouncing your name, so sorry to you. But anyways, I bought this during the last Criterion sale, I believe, but I had to return it because the lithograph was just messed up. The spine was like torn near the top, so I was just like, no. And every time I kept going into stores and ordering it from like Barnes & Noble's online, they kept coming in messed up, so I was like, baby, it's canceled. It's canceled for now. So, you know, basically almost, not almost a year, more like six months later, I've come back and I've bought it now because this one's in pretty good condition. But I've seen the movie. It's a, a watch that I was like, hmm. It was a hmm watch. Like, I had to watch the featurettes to, like, understand it more. But I would like to revisit this movie in the future. It kind of reminds me of another movie in the Criterion Collection called Celine and Julie Go Boating. But... I do think that movie is kind of better than this one, but I feel like, I think this one came out before Celine and Julie Go Boating, but I feel like this had an effect on making that movie, so I'm just like, I don't know. While watching this, I just couldn't stop thinking about Celine and Julie Go Boating, so if, like, the director of that movie got, like, inspiration from this movie, then it would make sense, but yeah, I would like to revisit this movie because they say it's a very influential piece of cinema, and it's like... I understand that, but I would like to rewatch it again because it's a little kooky, you know, if you've seen it. Okay, up next I have spine number 1174, and that is The Last Hurrah for Chivalry from John Woo. I bought this during the last Criterion sale, but I didn't realize there were dents in the back of the lithograph, so I sold it on eBay. I watched the movie before I did that, and I did enjoy the movie, and then I did recently see, like, the updated version that John Woo released. Um, a Better Tomorrow, is that what it's called? But, you know, I think A Better Tomorrow and this are both great. I kind of do like A Better Tomorrow because it's more modern. Sorry, sorry to, like, the people. Like, I was watching, like, the featurettes on this, and they were like, it was a complete bomb because it was, like, an old Wuxia-style movie in, like, the late 70s, I believe, when this came out. And it was like, no one wanted to watch that. And I was like, yeah, I kind of get it. But, you know, it's whatever. A Better Tomorrow is... A little bit more dramatic so it's like okay that's why I give that movie the edge not only that it's more modern but it's more dramatic than this one <sighs> John Woo's movies I also saw the killer too it was giving magnificent obsession but with guns is what that movie was given but yeah this movie it's great and I'm glad that I was able to get it in a better condition so yay for me but I just hope that maybe maybe the Criterion Collection can get the killer Back in their collection because it's one of the movies in like the first hundred that they released so hopefully they can get the rights back to get the killer and maybe release it on a 4k because that movie is amazing it's amazing you guys if you haven't seen a lot of John Woo's movies you should because like prior to like all his Asian movies his earlier works I think the only movie I saw from him were not one two I'm pretty sure it was Face Off and Mission Impossible 2. And Face Off is great, but Mission Impossible 2 
not my fave. So watching his older movies, I was like, yes, I see. I see now why he was like the thing. But then, you know, Hollywood kind of ruined him. So yeah, message for, you know, foreign directors. As Pedro Amadovar has like stated, it's like, you don't want to be in the studio system of Hollywood because they will like break down your ideas and like not let you make movies you want to make. And then it's like, you basically ain't making what you want to make. So it's like, Hollywood is not for everyone. Okay, up next I have spine number 1180, which is the legendary Thelma and Louise, directed by Ridley Scott, starring Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is just that girl. It's that girl. And it got so many Oscar nominations, but then it only won for best, I believe, original screenplay or adapted screenplay. I can't remember which category it was in, but it won a screenplay Oscar. And controversially, I believe that Susan Sarandon should have won the Oscar that year and not Jodie Foster. I mean, I don't like Susan Sarandon's Oscar win for Dead Men Walking, so I'm just like, this would have been the movie and performance to give her her Oscar for. And honestly, I'm just like, Jodie is not someone I think of as a two-time Oscar winner. I'm just like, when I think about The Accused, I'm like, for the time, yes, that made sense, but in retrospect, it should have gone to Glenn Close in Dangerous Liaisons, and then with this movie, it's like, if she was going to wait for The Silence of the Lambs, then it's like, okay. But if she kept her the accused Oscar, then she shouldn't have won for Silence of the Lambs, and Susan Sarandon should have won for this, because Susan Sarandon is a revelation in this movie. And overall, this movie is just amazing. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's like, society, screw society. We're going to do things on our own terms, and we're not going to, like, you know conform to societies tells us what we should do, you know, especially for women. That's why I was like, girl, y'all be robbing, but I don't care. You better work. You better work, you two. You better work, honestly. Mm. The ending of the movie, the ending of the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, then it's like, whatever. This is like decades old. But like, when they drive off into the ravine, when the police have cornered them, I'm like, girl, they, I feel like somehow they made it out because, you know, scammers never die, said Joanne the Scammer. Okay, up next I have spine number 1181, and that is Petite Mama from Celine Sciamma. I saw that they were playing this in theaters near me when it was, like, in its theatrical release. But I was like, whoa, only 100 in, like, 10 minutes. Do I want to get myself to the theaters to watch this? And sadly, I was like... No, there were other movies I wanted to watch at the time, and I was busy, so I was like, girl, sacrifices, I'll just watch it, like, when it eventually goes to Hulu, because I know it was partnered with Neon, and Neon has a deal with Hulu, so I was like, it'll eventually be on Hulu, but, like, yeah, when I saw this was gonna be in the collection, I was like, oh, cute artwork, and maybe I should finally watch the movie, so... Like, I bought this first, and then I watched it on Hulu first, because I was like, I don't want to open the packaging yet. But, yeah, I thought this movie was sweet. It was very, yeah, overall, it was a very sweet movie. And, you know, Celine Sciamma did what she needed to do in that 100, 100, in that 1 hour and 10 minutes that this movie is. Like, so, it's a good watch. Like, if you like Portrait of Lady on Fire, then go check this movie out because it's great too. I keep meaning to go revisit Celine Sciamma's older works, but I just haven't gotten myself to do that yet. I'm very glad that this, you know, Criterion also has the movie uh, My Life as a Zucchini because I've always been wanting to watch that, but, like, I haven't been able to get myself to. And, you know, I recently just learned that Celine Sciamma was, like, the writer of that movie and that it's in this too. It makes up for, you know, Petite Mama being so short. And My Life as a Zucchini isn't that long either, but, you know, the two of them together makes basically a two-hour movie. So it's like, it's worth getting this Blu-ray. So, yeah, get it. Okay, up next, I have spine number 1,185, and that is After Hours from Martin Scorsese. And it stars Griffin Dunn, Rosanna Arquette, Catherine O'Hara, and other people, because... Griffith Dunn is basically the main character of this movie, and everyone else just pops in and out of the movie. But this is a movie from Martin Scorsese that I'm just like, it is such a odd choice in his filmography, but I love it. It's one of my favorite movies from him. And I like how, you know, things just don't go right for this guy. I mean, I would feel bad, but he's not a good person. Like, people were like, oh, I feel bad for him. But it's like, if you actually are paying attention to him, he's actually a dick, so... I don't feel that bad for what he goes through in this movie, but I really love how, <laughs> once again, if you haven't watched this movie, then maybe go watch it because it's old, but 
I don't care about spoiling stuff, but like to the end of this movie when all the gays and the girls are trying to find him because they believe he's the like thief who's been stealing from everyone's apartments. I'm just like, this is a gag because he's also kind of thought of killing someone in this movie. But at the same time, it's like, they don't care about that. They just care that he's been the thief who's been stealing from everyone in the neighborhood. So they're like, get this thief. And it's like, but isn't he kind of thought of as having murdered that girl? So it's like, interesting that you guys care more about him stealing than him killing that girl. But anyway, this movie is just a lot of fun. And I kind of put it in the category of Scorsese movies like um, The Age of Innocence where people don't really think about these movies from Martin. They think about like the gangster movies. And it's like, I always find movies like this and once again, The Age of Innocence and The King of Comedy much more fascinating when it comes to Martin because he's flexing some things that, you know, people don't really think about him. Like, also, The Last Temptation of Christ, it's like, New York, New York, it's like, he has a lot of movies, and it's like, Cape Fear, it's like, oh my god, tons of movies, and it's like, I am drawn to the ones that aren't so gangster related, because, I don't know, he's just known for making movies about the mob, or gangsters, or whatever, but his movies that aren't about those things, I find way more interesting, but yeah, After Hours, finally happy to get this on a physical copy, I only had a digital copy of it before, but very happy to finally be able to get to own this on a physical and also in the best quality possible on a 4K. So thank God for that. Thank God for the Criterion people. Okay, up next I have spy number 1187 and that is One False Move from Carl Franklin starring Bill Paxton and Billy Bob Thornton. I've never seen this movie before. So once again, another blind buy, but they gave this a 4K release. They didn't even give Inland Empire a 4K release, and they restored that movie in 4K. So I was just like, this movie has to be quite something to get a 4K release. And I saw the Rotten Tomato score, and it was high, and I was reading some letterbox reviews, and people were raving about it. So, you know, I'm a fan of crime slow burn movies. Slow burn crime movies is what I meant to say. But, like, I'm a fan of those, and I'm a fan of movies from the 90s, because that's when I was like you know born i was born in the 90s so 90s movies usually are pretty good and they you know stand the test of time more than people want to say like i love 70s movies but and people really like the 80s movies but like i really love like movies from the 90s like when you rewatch movies from the 90s it's like mm, they were just hitting they were just hitting maybe once again maybe it's because i was born in the 90s but i just think 90s movies are really great but yeah, hopefully this movie's great because, like, once again, it's a blind buy and it's like, I don't know, I don't know. Blind buys can either be good or bad, so hopefully this is in the good category, not the bad. Okay, up next I have some box sets. So the first box set I have is technically spine number 1186, and that is the Ran Own Westerns. I mean, I had to get this because, you know, Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott is father, like... If y'all don't know he's father, then that's your loss. But I'm not a big fan of westerns. I'm pretty sure I've said that multiple times on my channel. But, like, I had to give this a chance because it's, like, maybe they put these on 4K. So clearly they have to have some merit. I heard they were, like, B-movie westerns. But that's fine. That's fine, baby. And, you know, as I said, Randolph Scott is father. Like, he, quote-unquote, allegedly was the longtime boyfriend of Cary Grant. And it's like, baby... Look at the clues. Look at the clues. Clues. There were clues everywhere. There were hints everywhere. There was evidence. There's evidence everywhere that him and Cary Grant were together. But like, I gotta say allegedly, because I don't know. Who knows if in the future someone might get me for like saying it as a statement, as a fact. So allegedly, allegedly. But anyway, yeah, it's like Randolph Scott, he's father. So had to get this because it's like baby you gotta support your father but like yeah hopefully these are good westerns and hopefully i don't sell this because i really like the packaging crazy because when i bought this they didn't put it on the floor yet and i asked them if i could see the copies they had because it said they had some online so they brought 11 and i asked them to look at all 11 because i'm very picky about the condition these box sets and basically movies in general that i buy are in so i looked at all 11 and i picked the 10th one that i looked at and I know that lady who had to bring them all out was annoyed that I was looking at every single one of them so closely. And it was like, maybe that's just how I am. That's just how I am. But I got in perfect condition, so I'm happy. And yeah, seriously, go seek out the whole Cary Grant Randolph Scott stuff because it's all there. It's all there, baby. It's all there. Cary Grant, bisexual icon. 
I mean, watch the movie My Favorite Wife with Cary Grant and Irene Dunn and Randolph Scott because just from that movie alone, you can see you can see how Carrie's feeling toward Randolph. So it's like baby evidence in real life, evidence in movies with the way like Carrie be looking at Randolph. It's like it's all there. It's all there. And I'm just like, yes, like, you know, recently with the Barbie movie, people are like Ryan Gosling is the first father to mother, but it's like that's not true. That's not true. Cary Grant is the first father to mother. So if y'all don't know that, then that's on you for not watching these old movies because Cary Grant was a father who was mothering constantly. And lastly, I have the Pasolini box set that they just released. I'm, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of Pasolini, but I watched the trailer for this box set and then I read the descriptions for all the movies that were in this box set. The only movie I've seen in this is Teorema. I own a Blu-ray of it and I might sell it, but let me look into if these are color graded differently because with these box sets, it's like, for some reason, they're color grading the movies differently than if they've been released sing in the like single movies. So I might keep my Tiorema, but like, I love Tiorema. I love Tiorema. I'm scared of Salo, even though I've never seen Salo. As, <laughs> as shown in the Portland video, segment of the video, I was like, have not seen Salo, but I've read what happens in Salo through Wiki. But yeah, Pasolini, he is a very interesting director. And once again, that's why I was like, I'll buy this box set because I feel like it's very informative of what he is as a filmmaker. So I was like, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to watch these movies. And if I don't like it, then I will sell the box set. But if I do like it, then hey, win-win, you know? And with that, that's the end of this whole Criterion show and tell. I would say it's a haul, but these were like three hauls smashed together. But anyway, that's all of the rest of the Criterions I bought during this Criterion sale. When I post this video, it probably would be the last day of the sale or like the day after the sale has ended. So yeah, I basically got everything I wanted. There were a few things I was looking forward to get, but I didn't get. But once again, the sale is going to happen again in November. So it's fine that I didn't get them right now. Once again, I'm just kind of annoyed that the new announcements are only giving us three new movies, basically, every single announcement. And it's nice that sometimes it's a box set, but then it's like, what if you're not feeling the box set either? It's like one of the announcements that just happened was the one with um, the others from Nicole Kidman and like that movie, The Nanny, that's on Amazon Prime, and then that box set with Freaks. Um, I don't know about the Freaks box set. Like movies from the 20s and 30s are kind of a spot that I'm not the most well versed in like pre-code and all that so in silent movies that's why I'm like mm, I don't know about that honey I recently watched The Nanny on Amazon Prime because they announced it was gonna be in the collection and I was like this is a good movie but I don't know if I want to own it and I was like okay the others like with Nicole Kidman work I want that on 4k so yes but it's like when I was looking at my list of movies I want to get the next sale I was like this is barely anything so once again I'm getting very sad because it's like these hauls for me personally aren't getting like better it's like once again it's probably gonna stop sooner or later because it's like I've basically gotten everything I want and with all the other criterions I don't own I can just watch on the criterion channel or on max or like borrow it from my local library so yeah once again this whole criterion collecting thing I think it's gonna come to a stop eventually because it's like I basically got all the ones I want and basically I'll just be getting all the new ones so it's kind of sad, but it's whatever. I mean, hey, maybe this might force me to finally start doing my whole complete Blu-ray collection video, Blu-ray 4K, whatever, collection video, and the start of that video is going to be my Criterion, so that might be fun for at least you to watch. It will be hell for me to not only film, but to edit, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe before the end of the year, I will have started that video series because that's going to be at least a five or six part like series of all the Blu-ray 4Ks that I own from not just the Criterions, but to the regular Blu-rays, Blu-rays with slips, special like editions of movies, all that jazz. But yeah, that's going to be a lot of filming. And I think I might have to borrow my brother's camera to do that because that's going to take a lot of time because... I want to talk about all the movies that I have, like, in depth, especially if I really like them. So, whew, when those videos come out, it's going to be the end of me, but y'all probably will like that. So, huh, we'll see when that happens. I keep saying that. I keep saying I'm going to start doing this video series on my complete movie collection, but it hasn't happened yet because it's like I'm a busy person and also sitting in a chair and filming 
takes a lot out of me. So it's like, we'll I'll see, we'll see. Anyways, you guys, tell me down below in the comments what you guys thought about the criteria I got during the second half of this sale. And, you know, tell me some of the criterions that you got if you finally got criterions now or if you picked up some more. I mean, it's interesting how people only get a few and it's like, I get it. But my mindset is like, I'm going to get these eventually anyways, so might as well just get them now. But as you saw, as you saw me like talking, I basically run out. Other than the new ones that are coming out, I'm basically going to be like, well, nothing for me to buy. So... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with that, that's the end of this video. So thank you guys for coming to my channel and watching this whole video. Maybe you didn't watch the whole video. Maybe you skipped around. Who knows? But just thank you for coming and watching me like talk for however long this video is. And I guess I'll see you guys around in the next video, whatever that video is made, whatever that video is about. See you guys there if you're there. So yes, thank you. Okay. Better go now, because once again, Oppenheimer. Gotta get to Oppenheimer. So, yes. Bye.